Hi everyone, welcome to Grow Roots. We're just barely catching it, but this is the June front garden tour. We haven't really been able to film it this week because we were on vacation in the last week or so. And uh, so I'm just barely getting in the June garden tour, but I wanted to show you this angle. My husband would be proud. This is our grass that he just cut and it's beautiful. It's at its peak right now. It's Zoysia Pacific Palisades. And we installed it in 2020. I think we installed it in, in the spring of 2020 during COVID and when we were doing the backyard remodel too. And it's just, it's gorgeous. So I wanted to show you the grass and its glory but we'll come on over and start where I usually start which is we'll try and find him Lambo he's a little bit covered right now the garden is a little bit wild but I think that's adorable seeing him peek through all of the the flowers that are right there so yeah here we go we'll start with the Thumbelina zinnias, which are supposed to be miniature in size. If you follow me, I two weeks ago, almost exactly, I cut these guys down to just a few inches above the ground because I wanted them, I, my vision for this border was definitely for them to be miniature. They're supposed to be 18 inches at most, 10 to 12 inches is what most websites say for Thumbelina zinnias and they grew to 36 inches before I get them and yeah you'll see these are not miniature but this is what the border is going to be this year and there's no changing it now I cut them back and they grew in super super full which zinnias are known to do and they're just starting to flower just this two weeks of growth two weeks of growth they're probably 24 and 20 inches tall now <laughs> to 24 inches so they're gorgeous um yeah so we'll start here i still have white pansies that are kind of hidden over here in a pot that are still doing spectacular i did end up taking out the white pansies that were here and replacing them with oh, i'm sorry yes pansies were replaced by white petunias that I got for $2.50 at Walmart and they are already starting to be taken over by the zinnias but they're they're fine they didn't go through any transplant shock even though it was about 90 degrees when I planted them two weeks ago and then here are uh let's see I think they're Sahara zinnias so okay so these guys are way more compact in growth i got these at callaways i could probably take off this this is an old flower i should probably do that but they're doing fine they're just nice and compact but compare them to the thumbelina zinnias it's just funny to me okay so here's the mum that's in full bloom right now they are getting it's 100 degrees has been a hunt over 100 degrees every single day for the last week we're definitely getting into the texas heat and uh so it is my mom is blooming but you can see too it's it's getting sun scorched a little bit so i just kind of came and deadheaded all of the really sun scorched ones but it's beautiful and uh i also have my rudbeckia grown from seed this year that was planted isn't that gorgeous so we're oh here we go you guys look we're in the very morning hours but here's our bee that's already feasting in that adorable I just love it uh, yeah so more petunias and zinnias Here's another of the Rudbeckia. Now this is the same Rudbeckia seed packet, but I see that this is a different type of Black-Eyed Susan. Super tall. Oh, look. Look, you guys. Look at these bees. Oh. Nick. He's so sweet. And then they've got their water source right there, which we've been having a lot of problems with algae. More. Let's see. Another bee on there. Gosh, that's so cool. 
So, yeah, the petunias are doing amazing. The zinnias, the rudbeckia. Kind of a sob story was the gomphrina that I planted back there, that pink plant right there. The only one to make it out of like six I planted back here. And it's just, you'll see the gomphrina if you see my backyard garden tour because I planted a bunch in pots. And there's just no comparison. The, the ones in the pots are doing amazing and these are just doing eh, okay. Uh, the Maynite salvia is right here. Right now, it's just coming back because again, if you watched my video on pruning the Maynite salvia, they bloomed like crazy, they look amazing, and then the blooms, you know, they were done, they were spent, and so I cut it all the way back. I cut, I cut probably two or three feet of growth off of these, and honestly, already, this was two weeks ago, already you can see it's budding up. So we've got a bud coming there. There's multiple buds everywhere. So we'll get another flush of blooms. Maybe not quite as impressive, but still there. And the sunshine ligustrum is doing amazing this year. I've pruned it a lot and hard. And uh, I'm probably not going to be able to prune much until this summer heat kind of... <laughs> dies back a little bit until we get back into the 90s consistently so this is they're gonna get woolly guys they're gonna get big they're gonna get woolly that's okay I'll prune them hard when I can again but just a beautiful plant I highly recommend it if you have a full sun part sun situation um, I love them coming over here to the pot since we're over here again I planted proven winners verbena uh, storm cloud and I just love it. I actually, if I, I can't find these anymore, um, they're gone out of the stores, but if I find more, I'm going to, I'm gonna do these for the border next year. I love them. And I, there are pink varieties too. There's just all kinds of different colors and I just love this plant. It's gorgeous. So that's gonna be my border plant <laughs> next year. Uh, here is the Lantana. I believe this was pink bandana lantana purchased at Green Acres and it's huge. It was just one plant in this pot and little teeny teeny tiny when I planted it and it's just grown tremendously. I'm so happy with it. Here is the Super Tunia Lovey Dovey from Proven Winners. Again, superstar plant. I wanted to show you that something I didn't see from before. I don't know if you can see that but it's like purple in the center and then these pink stripes that come out to make it look like a star. It's such a pretty, pretty, pretty plant. Again, one that I would definitely grow. Again, it's done awesome. And another thing, these are uh, Vinca that I planted from seed, Baker's Creek heirloom seeds. And I thought that the lovey-dovey would just take over, but there's Vinca still popping up all throughout. So that's fun. It's it's great and here's something I'm just super super happy about is my limelight hydrangea that I'm training into a standard you can see that uh, I've had to stake this so there are here's the main trunk right here and then it has three branches there was a fourth branch right here that broke last year it's okay but I kept three main branches and then I kept only three branches per branch here uh, and they we got a rainstorm the other day and since these guys are in full bloom they take on a lot of water and this thing just flopped completely that way <laughs> so I have three stakes now and that's kind of holding it up because I need it to keep this shape that's going to harden up this year. And if it's, if it's tilted or tipped over, it's not going to harden correctly at all. It won't be that tree form shape that I'm wanting. So it's all staked up and that's okay. But look at these blooms. They're just gorgeous. They're starting to turn white. They start out green and then they pretty quickly turn white. And with these 100 degree plus days, they probably will scorch 
a little bit in the next uh, three to four weeks. And then I'm going to, I don't know with this one because I'm training it, but my the one in the back, that's a shrub shrub. I'm going to prune them when they sun scorch. I'm gonna prune them off and hope that another bloom will flush. I don't think I want that to happen with this because it will be too heavy. I don't know, I don't know. We'll see when the time comes. I'll make that decision later, but it's just gorgeous. So moving back over to the left side of my garden, that is the Vitex tree. So between, I don't know when it was, mid-May and now late June, mid-May I, I filmed, yeah, it was like May 14th that I filmed the May garden tour and it was just starting to come into bloom but not quite there yet. <laughs> and then uh, a couple days after I filmed that tour is when it started blooming and then now in late June it's done with its first bloom. And now I'm going to go and cut off these blooms, these huge blooms, because I don't want it to form seed. I want it to bloom again throughout the summer. So I'm going to cut these off probably to here and then it will bloom again. I realize eventually this tree, I'm not gonna be able to do that. It's gonna be too tall. But for now, it's short enough that I can deadhead the blooms and um, we'll get blooms all summer long doing that. So coming back under here, oh, do you see that? <gasps> he got something. That lizard just got something. What did you get, dude? Oh, yeah, he got a spider. Well, enjoy your spider meal. My husband would say good job because he hates those things. Actually, is it a grasshopper? I think it's a spider. Well, that's cool. There you go, guys. <laughs> uh, coming under here is my ground cover. And I'm just loving it. It is, this is the, um, the Ajuga, goodness. Why is the name escaping me right now? But it is, it never did bloom for me, but that doesn't matter because of this beautiful purple and pink foliage. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait for next year because it should bloom in the spring. I've got my variegated Vinca Major that should have pink bloom or purple blooms, but yeah, we didn't get those because I transplanted them right before they should have bloomed and or I planted them and so they're just growing 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 this plant is de could definitely be invasive guys I'm gonna have to watch it because I don't want it all throughout the garden bed I just want it under here under the Vitex tree to keep the weeds from going and because it's a shade environment so you're gonna have to keep an eye on this plant if you plant it because it is pretty vigorous as is the Vitex tree oh here's one I'm coming out here every couple weeks because it will grow these these little shoots and it'll get super bushy really really quickly i want it to look more like a tree so i'm constantly taking these things off and then here is my hosta that i grew from brea root last year and look look at that beautiful bloom it's gorgeous it's looking pretty good so this was old snail damage I think we've gotten a hold of the snails pretty good. Here's more ajuga and more vinca. And coming around here is my huge hydrangea. Endless summer hydrangea. Didn't get too many blooms. I'll show you what I've got for now. This is a new one. I love the pink of this one. I'm not going to make this one blue, although I could if I added soil acidifier. It's just harder to do in when it's planted in the ground. But here's one of the older blooms still going. And this is the first bloom of the season. And I'm gonna keep it there, it's still just nice. And I have lots of blooms coming too. So here's gonna be a bloom, another bloom. So yeah, it's looking good. It's doing quite well. To the front of the house, here is my three-tiered planter that you can t not tell is a three-tiered planter anymore. <laughs> this has been so interesting. So number one is the mums. I have cut these guys back so hard and they just continue to come back super, super strong. This is the lower tier of my planter 
and what you see here is the supertunia honey and what I love is it has done well it took it a while but what it's doing it's kind of coming over and mixing in with the mum and I love it because it's looking for sun the mum is covering up its sun and so it's like well I'll just grow on top and it's beautiful that way I love it and then here you've got the supertunia persimmon this one I got two of these this one is doing amazing I'm fertilizing these guys every week to two weeks so that they need that they're constant bloom and they're constantly being watered because they're in a container so yeah so you could see the I'm, I have already trimmed the persimmon up once but it's already just completely flushed out and I'm gonna need to trim that again because it's kind of you know the inside here it's just coming it's coming out and over and that's great that's fine but I do need to trim this up but it, you just can't tell at least for the bottom tier and the second tier you can't tell that there are two different tiers here it's really cool and then the super bells I think it's just super bells yellow from uh, proven winners they're doing fantastic too they're mixing in um, almost matching the vigor of the persimmon but you know not quite but what I uh, another thing okay so you guys know that before I had purple bellvine here and I was so excited I was inspired by the Aaron at the impatient gardener and <laughs> it died it grew to about this length honestly and then I don't know what happened it was not root rot because when I dug it out the roots were fine and growing out and I have no idea what exactly happened maybe some type of bacteria or fungus because there were spots on the leaves and so I just decided to pull it out and I replaced it with English ivy that actually came from this area of my pot right here <laughs> and so I just transplanted it and it did amazing I haven't seen a whole lot of new growth from it yet but because it's just kind of establishing again but I hope that that will at least grow up this this trellis vine that I've created this espalier but the super tunia honey this part of the plant has figured out there's more air and growth over here so it's almost mixing in with the ivy and I wonder if it will grow up it I don't know we'll find out we're fairly early in the summer so who knows what could happen and then here on top uh what's left up here is the super bells that I got from Green Acres um cha-cha and what used to be right here i just left the hole that was my other super tunia persimmon plant and for some reason two weeks ago when i went in to chop you know ch i say chop them i pruned them you're supposed to do that with petunias for some reason after that it just it turned yellow and the, there were new blooms and I thought okay it's gonna it's gonna be okay it's gonna recover it's gonna flush itself back out but the new blooms were yellow and then they died so I have no idea again what happened with that plant but it died I took it out and I'm just letting the cha-cha kind of fill in its spot which it is we've got our pink geranium still going strong here I keep dubheading them when the blooms are done but I mean there's a brand new bloom head coming up and it's grown like it's doubled in size at least so it's doing well and the cha-cha just looks awesome and I've still got some blue pansies over here but yeah you guys can see the hundred degree temperatures are taking its toll I'm gonna probably take these guys out here pretty soon but look at this actually that's a new bloom and it looks great <laughs> so <laughs> it's trying it's doing really well but yeah, it might be time for that to come out. That's okay. All right, so coming up on my porch, here is the cole one of the coleus planters, and it is blooming. And the this is the first time I've grown coleus, but I mean, these look like salvia blooms. They're purple, and then the stem is deep purple. And then the leaves are deep purple like oh it's spectacular I did cut these back right after my front garden tour I know I was debating on that and I did cut them back and then I'm glad I did they grew in much fuller and and beautiful a lot of people cut 
the blooms off of the coleus because they want it to put the energy into the leaf growth but wow the blooms are pretty awesome <laughs> I, I think i'm gonna be leaving the blooms i think they're beautiful and then we've got this red and and green one which is really neat this speckled green and purple and then the ivy i i took this ivy plant out but i cut some of it and i just put the cuttings inside and they took immediately and they're starting to grow it's just an awesome plant this swedish ivy if it's in a container i know it would be invasive if i planted it in the ground and that's why they are in containers y'all but i really do love it and then i had one white petunia plant left so i just left it there and it's doing great and coming back over to my hydrangeas in pots on my porch okay so here is the variegated i'm pretty sure this is a variegated lace cap hydrangea although i don't know because i've never seen it bloom i bought it at the end of last season there were no blooms i thought i would get blooms this season i have not but this plant has doubled or tripled in size because it was little 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 and it has grown all the way up here and the leaves are beautiful look at this this one's almost i think it is completely white i mean spectacular foliage and if it doesn't bloom okay <laughs> but it's still so pretty i love it and then you've got i call it big daddy hydrangea um so it it bloomed pretty well here these are all the old blooms and i will leave them on they are green right now but do y'all know what's ha what's gonna happen? And I just found this out last year or the year before. So it's green, it turns green, and that's when most people take them off. But it's going to turn like this magenta color, and you could already see it is turning a magenta color on the outsides. And then coming in, it'll keep that color through Christmas time. And so it's this beautiful like burgundy magenta at Christmas, and I love it. So. Yeah, these are the old blooms. Gonna leave them there. This one's a little bit newer. Starting, it's purple, turning pink, and then it'll turn green again. But I've got um, some new blooms coming too. Just like my other hydrangea. Endless summer, you guys. <laughs> it'll just keep blooming. So this is so fun. I love this plant. And we've got our other coleus planter. This one is not as big as the other coleus planter. And I think it's because it doesn't quite get as much sun and again these it's in the shade most of the day but you can see this one is pink and purple speckled it's beautiful i love the color of this one one of my favorites and then this is another speckled kind of reddish and green and then i've got another dark purple one and these have not bloomed again probably because this is mostly shade that's the cool thing about coleus and I don't, this might be new for you guys. I think I got this lavender plant. Mm, it may have been brand new for when I got it May 14th. I don't remember. Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you haven't. But I picked it up because it had blooms. And I've never been able to get a lavender plant to bloom for me. And I've kept it here. It gets a little bit of sun. But mostly shade and in texas heat i think that's what lavender might prefer because look at this it's gorgeous and i don't have to water it very often it does not like to be really 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 moist as a matter of fact right now it's bone dry you guys and it's just loving life so that's super fun i love it all right so the last thing i wanted to show you were my mother's day planters and i don't remember if I was able to show these to you last time, but I, my husband gave me permission to just go shopping and do what I wanted. And what I wanted to do was put one planter here and one planter there and just fill it up. And I thought, you know, it's coming into June, July, red, white, and blue might be really fun as the theme. And I've always wanted to grow Evolvulus, which is what this is. And goodness, it's maybe my favorite pot planting design to date so this is blue days evolvulus 
And one thing, it, it is a type of morning glory, I guess, of alveolus dwarf morning glory is what it's called. And uh, so these blooms are mostly in the morning. Towards the end of the day, you see they close and then they'll open back up in the morning. But it's a true shade of blue and it's so beautiful. I'm so glad I picked up this plant. And then I've got red vinca that has exploded, tripled, maybe quadrupled in size. Red salvia. It's already finished its first bloom and then I cut those off and this is its second flush of blooms. And then we've got the Proven Winners Pina Colada Lantana. Lantana? I believe that's what it is. And it took a while for it to take off, but this last week of 100 degree plus heat, it has really taken off and started blooming. And, um, and it will be the centerpiece of this just as I had imagined it before all the other plants were taller than it. And now it's finally grown. So on this side is more red salvia and another, this one, I decided to do a little test. This is actually, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, what is the proven winners? Blew my mind. That's what it is. It's Evolvulus. Dwarf Morning Glory, just like the Blue Days is, but it's Proven Winners supposed, supposed to be improved upon the Blue Days, and it's called Blue My Mind. And these were the same size as the Blue Days before. The Blue Days may have been just slightly bigger when I first got them, but they're double the size of the Proven Winners now. It was kind of my test. This, this is in full sun all day long. There's really just no difference between this side and this side in terms of sun or anything else, to be honest. Uh, but I have to say the regular blue days has grown a lot better than this has. And I will, after this, um, I'm going to turn this pot 180 degrees so that this side is on that side. And we're going to see if this starts growing better but my experiment has been that uh, the regular non-branded Blue Days of Alveolus has done better <laughs> but we'll see and then you know this planter is the same planting the Blue Days of Alveolus is this one doesn't have as many blooms but it's about to it's just a different time in its blooming cycle and again, this Proven Winners, see I've got two of them, so it's not just a coincidence. This is about to come into bloom, but you could see this plant is half the size of this plant. The Proven Winners has not grown as, as much as the non-branded. So that's just my experience. You guys can let me know what you think. But turning back around to get a full view of the garden. I'm super happy with it. Again, we're late June and everything is just doing outstanding. I'm so happy with it. So I'm so glad you joined me. Thank you for watching this June front garden tour. Stay tuned for next month <laughs> when the heat will really take over, I'm sure. So this might be the peak of what you're seeing, but I can't wait to show you next month. Don't forget to like the video and comment. Let me know what you think and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for your support. Bye-bye.